making it possible for him to attain the age of 70. King of glory, you have been so faithful to him. You have kept him through thick and thin. You have been there for him at all times. King of glory, we return all the glory to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, King of glory, we are here to celebrate his birthday, to celebrate him, and to give you the glory for what you have done for him. Father, we return all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and our God, King of glory, we are starting this event with you. We are praying to continue with you and that you are going to get, go through the, the whole process with you. All to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, we want to thank you once more for all you have done. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Yeah, I can't Lastly, I believe in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament gives us 120 years. So, for those of us who believe in the Old Testament, uh, plastic is only still a, a very young guy. Uh, uh, I know what I know what he eats and what he drinks that making him look so youthful. And thank God that it was announced publicly that this man is 70 years. Be because before, uh, there was a time I was uh, talking with somebody, and my grandson came around, and was quarreling with somebody who said that I was 40 years. So my grandson, my grandson said, Grandpa, can you imagine this boy saying that you are 40 years old? I said, uh, I'm a little more than that. He said, 50. I said, uh, a little more than that. <laughs> he said, 60. I said, a little more than that. My grandson looked at me and said, Grandpa, you are very, very old. <laughs> <laughs> this is really a very wonderful thing. Uh, plus, uh, as was uh, said at the church, has been uh, around for us. He has been a school teacher. He has been a vice chancellor. He has also been a, a secondary school uh, teacher today, as you saw the kids uh, sing. May you join me to thank God for a life that has been so blessed. And not only that he's so blessed, that he's also grateful. There are so many people who are so blessed, who are even more blessed. But uh, they take life for granted. Uh, bless it. And uh, particularly thanks to Bola for making it possible for him to remain great. Uh, bless it. Believes in his God. And has been so steadfast in serving him. I'm praying that he should uh, honor the biblical, that God will grant him the biblical 120 years at least. Uh, and then count it for the good health of plastic and longer life and a blessed uh, life together with Bola. But I hope you are there. But oh, she's not around. So we have to do this again. Thank you, bro. Cheers. 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 Yes. 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 And we thank God for the fact that it's not only that God has blessed him, but that he is grateful that God has blessed him. So we want you to join us in this thank, thank God. But let us all stand and sing.
No, not for his. Thank you. This has to be a thank you song. But uh, where is uh, Where is my, my daughter? Inkechi. Uh, because she's the one that I know that can sing. <laughs> you are right, right. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want God to be angry with us after all this. Thank you. Thank you. Inkechi. Uh, come on. Uh, we, uh, we, we used to say that Nkechi is my daughter, but uh, pa uh, Placid is her biological father. <laughs> Can you lead us in a thank you song? To celebrate the day. To celebrate the day. Thank you to Thank you. Since he got married, he just disappeared. <laughs> so I was joking with him. I said, people who get married just, just, just disappear. That they still stay around. And uh, so when the, I think now that the father is 70, we are celebrating. I think the next celebration will be when he's uh, 80. Yes. Uh, may that God uh, bless him God. for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Oh, that's true, but uh, that's, that's another one. Oh, for making uh, plastic to be such a happy man and fulfilled man. I'm forever young. I'm forever young. <laughs> and now we know the secret because he whispered it to me. <laughs> See that now. I think let's toast you. May you both remain happily married. Amen. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for looking out for me. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget. Thank you for taking care of my family. We are happy. Cheers. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being such an ebonized wife. <laughs> She's more Igbo than Igbos. And that's the beauty. <laughs> this is your wine, you do me something. <laughs> <laughs> what thing they do? They push your head. They push your head, push your head. It's not right for lengthy discussion, but um, I will make it as quick, you know, as possible. When people say they want to talk about their spouse, I began to wonder, what do you want to say about your spouse, really? Because this is somebody you spent 
I've spent 33 years legally with my husband as his wife. Illegal income. <laughs> Keep quiet. So. <laughs> What? I want you all to join me in thanking God because this is a, it's a rare opportunity, you know, to have the opportunity. I mean, to have the privilege of talking about you know your spouse. Um, Placid and Joko Chicken um, is a very dependable person. Defendable in every sense of the word, as a father, as a husband, as a friend. Oftentimes people ask me, you are from the other side of Nigeria. Uh, I was also not, you know, a Catholic. I come, I have the background of, you know, Yoruba and Hausa together. Please, <laughs> you young ones, listen, you, know, you have a lot to learn, yeah? To marry and give a was not the easiest of huh? things, you know, uh, as far back as um, 33 years ago. Uloma knows very well. But, you know, my father said something to me. He finally, you know, let go. That Bola, if this man is your husband, I want you to agree with me that she will marry him. This wedding will take place. But if he's not your husband, even if the wedding is today, let something break it. And I said, Amen. I agree. But since the wedding went on, I knew it was God's will. It was not an easy journey because, you know, you had to contend with a lot of issues. People say that the first two years of their married life is a, a honeymoon, but for me it wasn't. It was the most turbulent aspect of my married life. Because you are getting to adjust, readjust, you know one another. A culturalization. Yeah, I know each person is in different places. But I thank God that, you know, I overcame. And uh, we stayed together, and after that, it got, you know, better and better and better. And the secret of uh, being together up to today is not because Placid is my husband, no. As a matter of fact, I don't see him as my husband. And I tell people this, but they don't understand it. I see him as my friend. Just like I see my children as my friend. And that's why I'm able to relate to them. It doesn't matter at what level. Because when there is friendship between two people, you will have your problems, but you will also solve them, you know, as friends. And one key ingredient for friendship is communication. And we're able to communicate, we're able to talk about each other. And with that, it is my singular pleasure to give God all the glory for sparing his life up to this moment. Two years ago, we had a crisis in his family where we were told that he may not be alive. But you know, that was the doctor's verdict. Even though I am a doctor, I reject doctor's verdict at times, even for myself. It is only God's verdict that will stand in our life. Amen. And God's verdict for each and every one of us, I want you to know today, is for good, not for evil. To give us a hope and a future. And there's no way he's going to allow us to die prematurely. Because we have to fulfill all those things, you know, that he has promised us. And for those of you who are here today, by the special anointing of God Almighty that is upon me as a child, I decree that all is well and will be well with each other. Amen. And your children's children in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, back to the man of the moment. The man called Placid, the youngest old man. <laughs> my, my very, very <laughs> handsome husband. <laughs> Unassuming, kind, loving, considerate, humble, self selfless, very humble, which actually connotes 
the meaning of his name. Wherever it is, there is tranquility. May there be tranquility in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Placid is a very principled person. He believes in hard work. He believes in merit and excellence. He does not compromise. After I married Placid, I needed to, you know, go back to school um, to do my postgraduate. And you know, one of the things that actually, you know, spurred me is because. I could never come back to my husband to tell him that I made a B. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want that excuse. The first thing he would ask you is, were there people, those people in your class who made A's, did they have two heads? And I'll say to him, no. So, how come you are making this great? Plastic is ready to help other people's children to get admission. But Placid will never raise a finger to help his own children. Because I remember once he told the children, I said, you know, Nigeria is not very competitive. And apart from that, too, there are, you know, the other issues. That was really okay. Therefore, 100% is no longer enough for you. You have to make over 100%. So that even if I have to talk, I can talk with confidence that this, my child, is so, 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 and so. And that is the way it has been for everybody in the family. No wonder, and I give God the glory, some of our children actually made first class. Not because there's anything exceptional about them, but when you have a motivation to work, and you have a vision, you know this is where you are going to, this is your route, you don't have a choice to focus. He has helped me to be focused, he has helped me to know what I want in life, to set objectives and deadlines, and to work towards achieving them. Thank you, my darling. You have also given me a lot of confidence. I've always been a confident person, but my association actually, you know, boosts that, you know, more. Uh, and for me, I think God does not make a mistake. He gives you what He knows you need to complement your own you know, effort and virtues. He gave me plastic and I'm very grateful for this beautiful gift. Beautiful divine gift. Like I was saying uh, before I now started talking about plastic. Plastic is a good husband. He's a good father. He's a good listener. Me, before, I don't have the patience to listen to people. But it will shock most of you like that. You can talk to me from morning to night and I just listen. And let me tell you, there is virtue in just listening. It is better to listen than to talk. If I, even when you don't know what to do or what to say, listen. And I used to be, you know, quick tempered. And once I start like this, you just say, bala, 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 take a deep breath. Initially, I wasn't listening to him. But I discovered, you know, after reflective and critical thinking, that any time I fail to listen to him, at the end is not, it is never good. And because of that, I had to pinch myself and say, no, there must be wisdom in his advice. So I now started listening to him. And you know, before I do anything, no matter how difficult the situation is, I do a quick, you know, internal thinking. And when I'm about to get angry, I just laugh. Because he taught me that don't get angry. When you are angry, the burden is on you. Leave that person and don't keep malice so that the burden will return to the person. And truly, when you are angry, you are beclouded by a lot of things. And you are actually the victim. You may think that the other person is the victim. No, you are the victim. This has taught me a lot of things. Alongside, of course, my closer work with God, which I will never give up for anything, because that is the ultimate. So today, his 70th birthday, he didn't really want anything. He just wanted to have party with the poor people, which was what we did yesterday. We had party with poor people, and we had a medical outreach. That is our own way of saying thank you to God 
for saving his life, for keeping us together as a family, for all the things he has done for us. Our children are doing well. We are doing well. Doing well is not having millions of accounts. We probably don't even have thousands, but we are happy. We have peace. The peace of God that passes on understanding and that cannot be bought with even gold and diamond. And we have one another. And more, most importantly, we have God. God is the head of this family. And he will continue to be the head of this family. So, my dear husband, I celebrate you. At 70, for me, oh, we are just 30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you will continue to be 30 yeah. as far as I'm concerned yeah. I will continue to be by your side yeah. through thin and thick yeah. I will never leave you Amen. because I love you very much Amen. and I want you to know that Amen uh -uh. Not so. <laughs> African woman I'll kiss, kiss him now let me proper kiss him. <laughs> I see. I, 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 I want to thank you and every one of you for gracing this occasion. Like I said, this was supposed to be a very small thing. Small... See, we close it by open. And truly speaking, we have made my day. If only you can open my heart to see it, because you know how it is. I just feel it's good for us to see it. My my stand on the rock. And that's God to say that whatever I am wishes, that we shall all come to in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And just like you gave obstacles for my family, just like you gave us reasons to smile and be happy, your lives shall be filled with Amen. 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 Eyes have no sin, no ears yes. heard, no heart conceive what the Lord is going to do. We only need to pronounce it and it shall be so. Amen. Because it's said in the book of Jeremiah, 29th chapter, that God's plan for us is for good and not for evil. Yes. To give us a life, a future, and a hope. And I decree so, so shall it be for each and every one of us here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Very distinguished friends of the family. I could dismiss everything that is being said here as forget it. Because, uh, you know, when you have an occasion like this, this is an opportunity for people to blow all the big grammar they have in their, in their hearts and in their minds. But you know, I, I recognize that uh, if I say that, tonight I'm going to go back into this house with this woman. <laughs> and so I cannot uh, very easily discount what she says. But on a very serious note, I don't, uh, when people say these things about you, what great things you've done, what this you did for this person, or did that for that person, and so forth and so on. I, I, I am... Um, Taking her back. Why? Very simple. I don't lose anything by doing something right. I don't make any special effort to do something right. Nothing. I don't lose anything. Somebody wants to go to school, the opportunity to get him to go to school, you get him to get to school. That's 
natural, isn't it? Somebody has a need for something. You have that thing and you can't give it. They give it to him. So, when we talk about this thing, it seems like that somebody is going and uh, pulling down bits of heaven to dash people. No! You're just living your normal life. See, as I thought, the heavens are descending. Right, you see? The Reverend Fathers and the Reverend Sisters are coming. Yes. But uh, frankly, that is my attitude to it. That the simplest thing to do is to do the right thing. When you start doing anything wrong, you start losing your sleep. You start losing your comfort. You start getting anxious. You start getting, you start getting, you start losing weight, all sorts of things start happening to you. So all I would like to say to everybody is that I thank Almighty God that he has let me allowed me to come to this age, to, to, to grow like this and be myself. That in being myself, I have not, I've tried not to hurt people. I've tried not to trip over people. I've tried not to do things to injure people. And frankly, all I recommend to all of us, people ask you, oh, what do you do to look like this? Why are you, you look 25, you look 30, you look, I saw a couple of Austrians who were at the meeting with us here. Um, I had a private meeting with them, and I was telling them, um, I was going to invite them to this event. Fortunately, they were going, they traveled yesterday. And um, so when I told them what was going to happen, the guys got up and said it was impossible. They can't be, they can't be 70. I said, why not? I just, they looked foolish to me. All you need to do is be yourself. Don't assume what you are not. At all times, let your feet touch the ground. That's my attitude to it. And once you do that, believe me, when you want to sleep, five minutes, you are snoring. You are not just sleeping, you are snoring. You are driving on the road. And you are keeping your own, but well, Nigeria is not a regular place to drive. Because if you are driving in Nigeria, you drive your own car and drive the next person's car. You know? So, but um, invariably, wherever you are, no matter what circumstance you find yourself, do just that what is right. And so, for all those who have noted what they believe that I've done in my life that have affected them, I am. Um, I, all I must say is give the gratitude to God. Because really, everything I've done has come from what God, what I believe God wants me to do. And uh, this day today, for me, really, I'm glad to see my friends. I'm glad to, to sit here with you. I'm glad to. Today was Mass. And for me, after going to Mass, you should come home for a glass of water and things like that. But really, it wasn't for a party. You know, I have a party. Like my wife said, I had my party yesterday. I had my party yesterday. It was a great party. And I didn't want to say this, but I'm going to say it here. I had this party yesterday. What happened was that my wife I alluded to it. Uh, 2015, we had quite a number of shocks in the family. My mother died. Soon after that, I had to leave for India for a surgery, a very major surgery, and I came back. Um, after 20, exactly 20 days, and seven days later, I had to bury my mother. Um, and that kind of surgery I had was surgery that you had to go back from time to time. They check you, they do this, they do that, they do that on you. And I came back here, and um, I was putting together 10 naira 50 kobo, 12 naira 50 kobo, 1 naira 50 kobo, just, just in case I have to travel. But you'll be doing your tests and so on. I've done my tests, I've done my tests for one full year, plus and plus and plus. And I find that the thing is, when I go for tests, my result is 0 0.01, less than 0 0.01. Zero. Zero. 
The day I was going to pay for a ticket to go to, back to India, that evening I got a text message, a WhatsApp message from my doctor that he's coming to Abuja. I said, look at this. So the man came here. I met him, showed him my results and everything. He said, well, don't you worry yourself. Don't do your test every month anymore. Now start doing it every three months. After somebody said, I'll start doing it every six months. But basically, so when I realized that I put together this money, and uh, I probably wouldn't need it to go to India to pay uh, Emirates, to pay, what's the name of that hotel we used to stay in, uh, NK or something in uh, India, pay Apollo Hospital, pay that hospital, pay this doctor, pay for this test, that test. And I found I didn't have any need for it. I didn't have any need for it. So what did I do? I decided, well, if God has spared me, why don't I use this thing to meet the children of God? So I decided that my party was going to be for those people. Forties. Yeah, forties. That, that I would rather go do this thing with my... Those who <coughs> are not as provided for as I am. And um, who we class as needy. But who have... Who are the images of our Lord Jesus Christ? Who are no less heirs of the kingdom of God than we are. I decided that my party was going to be with them. And yesterday, by the grace of Almighty God, on the platform of St. Vincent Paul, we had a great outing at uh, the church. So, in fact, if anything, it didn't cost me anything. It didn't cost me anything to do that. I just used that money that I would have paid Emirates and all that. To do it! And Today, it's my wife's business. She's the one that herself and her children are the ones that uh, decided they were going to bring people home and so on. And I thank them. In fact, I'm as much a guest as yourselves. <laughs> you saw the, the, the cake they brought here. They didn't mention themselves. They mentioned husband. They mentioned dad. They mentioned granddad. They didn't mention themselves. So, I'm just a guest, just like any one of you. So, Ladies and gentlemen, I must thank you guys immensely. Um, invariably in your life as you grow, there are people who touch you at different levels. They touch you. And um, even those people you call your enemies, those people you consider your enemies, those are probably the people who give you the greatest opportunity to manifest who you are. Those people you call your enemies, they are the ones that challenge you to be truly who you are that you're able to overcome them, what they think themselves. And like my wife said, don't go and carry somebody else's body. Somebody you're you're, you're, you're carrying a malice in your mind because of somebody did this or did that. Believe me, while you're carrying that malice and thinking what you're going to do, that man is snoring in his bed. So don't let that bother you. Be yourself, be, be yourself. That's what it is. So, I thank Almighty God that He's brought me to this uh, covenant age. And uh, all I'll do is to continue to commit myself to Him and to say um, I will never forget what good my God has done for me. And I'd like to invite all of us, that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that let us all be a, try and be ourselves. Those things that look exciting today, by the next day, they don't mean anything. When I became vice chancellor, one man came to me and said, you know, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. He said, what is it? Two things. One, he said, said to me, everything you are going to do, don't be in a hurry to do it. If there are 10 steps to do a thing, to achieve, to do something, go through the 10 steps. Don't say there is an emergency, and because of the emergency, you do seven steps or nine steps instead of ten. Tomorrow, somebody will say, ah, he created the, the scenario of the emergency so that he could beat the system. Hmm? And you can get into trouble for that. The second thing he told me was, 
everything you do, everything you sign, read it. Everything you sign, read it before you sign. He said, you know why? He said, no. He says, that small piece of paper that you wrote can be used to package groundnut, groundnut, peanuts, for children who are coming back from school, who just stopped in a woman's place. The woman takes some groundnut for them, puts it in a paper, and wraps it for them. This program have come from your office. Somehow, 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 the paper is with the groundnut seller. So she gives it to you. So the child is the groundnut, and if it's an intelligent child coming from school, you may say, oh, what is on this thing? And this small child will read it. He said to me, that same document could be read in the Supreme Court. <coughs> That simple document could also be read, read in the Supreme Court. So everything you do, everything you are going to sign, read it. Don't say, ah, this man knows sell too much book. So, and believe me, when the time came, that was what saved me from a cataclysmic catastrophe. <laughs> Super. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was it. To the point where and all of the president, all the documents in my university was, was photocopied and taken to Enugu and in, in a hotel in Enugu for three months. And everything was gone. They went through everything. And in the end, I was vindicated. vindicated. Thank you. So, so all I'm saying is don't try to be like anybody else. You might admire people. You may take good things from people, but whatever you take from anybody, moderate it with your own senses and just be yourself. That's all I can say. And for all of you who have been here today, I can assure you, can assure you, by the grace of Almighty God, you are all going to get to 70 years and much more in yeah. 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 My dear sister, those who are 70, those who are 70. They get to 120. They say the measures now are no longer 70, 71, 70. It's 70, 80, 90. Hmm? 70, 80, 90. You are going to get to 80. Amen. And you are going to get to 90. Amen. And you are going to get to any age that you desire now. Just desire any age now. That's the age you will get to. Just desire now. Huh? Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs>